What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Backpacking Podcast. Oh, thank you, thank you. We have a live audience with us tonight. Uh, we are at j h Outdoors here in beautiful downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Jeremiah, mm-hmm. how you feeling, man? Oh, dude, I'm excited. Yeah? It's fun to be here live, in person. <sighs> dude, I'm, I'm nervous. Why I don't know that? why, because there's people looking at us. There's people looking at us, and we need a guest. Do we need a guest? Well... I don't know. Maybe I we mean, can carry the show. You know, there's some guy shopping back here. Maybe he'd want to join us. Hey, excuse me, sir. Would you like to? Hey, it's Rob Belton. Who <laughs> knew? No one told me that this show was starting. <laughs> I was back there looking at, you know, some shoes and things I need to buy because, you know, I don't have enough gear. So that's why I got to j and I'm like, I need to buy some stuff. Here. I'll tell you what, this place is awesome. It's a nice How store. If you're ever in here. Central Kentucky, this is the place to go. And all I'm going to say is shop local, people. Shop yeah, local. Absolutely. So, uh, Jeremiah, we got a big announcement that oh, we need yes. to this let people good. in on. <laughs> Rob knows the announcement. So, uh, I have something here in front of me that is from a company we mentioned last week. Um, the sign ups have already closed, I believe, on the 100 mile challenge, right? They have. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So, hopefully, everybody's already joined there. And, um, John, I just need a uh, signature here. If you okay. would pass that over. I will sign that right now. There you go. And uh, okay. I feel like one of those high school kids that's picking out their college. You know, they're like picking up the hats. Oh, they're and doing they, that. They give you the <laughs> fake out. They put on the other hat. Congratulations, John. We are now signed with Outdoor Vitals. Outdoor Vitals has just become the title sponsor of the Backpacking Podcast. Woo! So very huge thank you goes out to Outdoor Vitals. Very awesome. Because, cool. uh, you know, they came after us pretty hard. <laughs> they are, they're great people. I man. mean, they were, they were pretty, like, pushy about it. But you know what? I like them, so I'm, I'm glad they were pushy about it. Um, uh, now, they're fantastic. No, we, we're we're really excited to work with them. Um, Going to be working with them for a while now, so you'll definitely, if you haven't heard of Outdoor Vitals, uh, you'll definitely get to hear more about them as we continue to uh, produce these episodes because like john said title sponsor now title sponsor that literally means that from next week on we are the backpacking podcast brought to you by outdoor vitals Mm -hmm. live ultra light live ultra light so it's gonna be fun we're really excited about this partnership they're great folks we've worked with them for three years now tason and the whole crew out there are fantastic Mm so uh jeremiah yeah We've been talking a lot about how garbage leave no traces, and um, <laughs> I see it uh, on the bottle. Oh here. yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> good. that conveniently got put so, right there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. So, me. so we've decided to bring in somebody from Leave No Trace, who's actually already a friend of ours. Why he would even call us friends that we don't know, but uh, we are glad to have Rob Pelton here to talk to us tonight about Leave No Trace. Yeah, I, I appreciate that because it is a concept we're all familiar with, but uh, it goes a little bit deeper in that, and I promise not to get too technical or too judgmental. That's not what we're about, but uh, if we're all going to enjoy the outdoors, let's keep it better for the next time and for the next generations as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. love it, love it. So let, let's get a little history. You, you've got actually somebody here with you. Yes. Maybe we should get her to come up to the microphone for a second so I everybody so. can, oh. can talk to I her as so. well. Yeah. So the amazing thing is, is we saw this job posting by Leave No Trace, and I forwarded it to Janelle, my partner, and I said, hey, check out this job. Yeah, this, uh, this company is hiring for traveling education teams. And she said, oh, let's she's... do it. Let's apply. And I was like, all right, let, let's do it. So we applied, we got hired, and we uprooted our whole lives and made a big change, and now we're on the road full time working for Leave No Trace. Janelle, how are you? Hey, you guys. Good. So uh, this guy talked you into traveling with him around the country, huh? Or vice versa. Or vice versa. That's true. (laughs) That's true. So tell us a little bit about your adventures, like what you've been doing so far and everything. Well, we've learned a lot, but we have done a lot of programs. One is a spotlight program, and it shines a light on a community, and it's a three-day spotlight thing where we kind of rally the community to help inspire and really keep the outdoors and preserve it and keep it beautiful. So that's one of the things that we've been doing a lot on the road. That's awesome. That's awesome. We really appreciate that you allowed him to come up and talk to us because we know you're the one in charge. So thank yeah, you for understanding. Know it, don't worry. Yeah, we, we all understand. We all understand. So we got some comments coming in and Janelle, you're actually pretty popular. Um, outdoor Ooh. Adventures 
Outdoor Adventures with Shane is flat out saying we'd rather listen to Janelle, Ro not wow. Rob. So wow. there's Can that. Go and Iowa. Uh, let's see. And then, and then, of course, Midwest Backpacker, Janelle, with Aww. a thousand exclamation Thanks. points. So uh, <laughs> uh, Metro on the Move says, uh, leave no hikers alone with your snacks. <laughs> That's right. So, all right, Rob. Rob, let's talk for a second. Right, let's do it. You have, you're kind of a world traveler when it comes to backpacking. As a matter of fact, I think your backpacking journey actually didn't start in the United States. No, it didn't. I mean, I've always been in the outdoors as a kid because, you know, that's just, it was free to play out there, right? Right, so right, right. Did. But yeah, but my backpacking journey started in Nepal, of all places. Uh, that's home to a little thing called Mount Everest, in case you haven't heard of what that you've is. Only counted, you've only climbed that, what, three times now? Uh, the last time was backwards. Backwards, good yeah. job. Yep. And uh, yeah, and then that, that I really fell into in love with the ability of just carrying everything you need on your back and just hitting the wilderness and being as self-sufficient as you can. And when I got back home to the States, I'm like, let's, let's go find opportunities. And you know what? There's actually backpacking trails out there that I can hike. Let's do it. Let's spend a ton of money to live like I'm homeless. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that the goal anyways? <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. really? Yeah. So, so... You were uh, talking earlier. We all went out to eat, mm -hmm. uh, and to celebrate you being on the show and our our new contract, we took you to a very decent, a very steak restaurant. swanky <laughs> restaurant, which I appreciated. Yeah. And is it weird that I ordered the most expensive thing? No, I, I kind of, of expected it <laughs> to right. be honest. Uh, that was kind of like oh, what I thought you were going to do, John. Yeah, <laughs> Rob. Uh, we met up and done some hiking this weekend. Yeah, and tell them about. Uh, well, he kind of covered our. Our food at one of the places. Well, Tell no, so, what so <laughs> we, we did. So Jeremiah and Bridget took Janelle and I out just to see a couple of the the really quick highlights of the Red River Gorge. Oh, nice. Now, now we weren't backpacking. We were just driving to the car, hitting a trailhead, mm -hmm. and then you know going to see the you know the the arches and, and and different things. And then on the way back, we decided to stop at an ice cream place. No big deal. Let's get ice cream. Why not? We earned it, right? We hiked a little bit, burned some calories. Yeah. I ordered a, a scoop in a cup. Janelle ordered two scoops in a cup. Bridget ordered a coffee, and this guy right here was like, I need three of the biggest scoops you can get into this waffle cone, and they were so impressed by it, they had to take a picture of it. Yeah. And, yeah, and we're like, you're not going to finish that, man. And he said, excuse me? <laughs> Dude, yeah, there was not a trace left of that. Challenge thing. accepted. It was impressive. We, was, got, we got in the truck, and I was driving on the way home. I was finishing this, uh, <laughs> this ice cream. I said, this last bite. I got down to the last little nibble, you know, the point of the cone. Uh-huh, yeah. said, I'd like to dedicate this last one to all the haters out there that didn't believe in me. <laughs> yeah. Pop that. And, but I did make a mistake, and uh, don't send me any hate mail over this. There may be Actually, some Actually, please do that. Please <laughs> send them hate mail over this. No. There may be some overlap in the backpacking community. I don't know. But uh, I accidentally got, was it the cookie crumble or something like that? But it was vegan. That's right. I, I remember know. that. It, cookie butter. Thank you, Bridget. Cookie butter. Wait a second. Cookie butter? Cookie butter vegan. Vegan. What? Yes. Ice cream. Vegan. It's an accident, man. That doesn't they, even sound possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know butter and vegan? Like, well, doesn't it come from cows? Yeah. I don't know what they, I guess fake fake butter. Fake cows? Almond butter. Is that a thing? Yeah, maybe the cows are then coconut. Maybe the cows are vegan. But, you know, actually, I was kind of thankful for it because that was so much dairy, dude. I was afraid. I was like, if I eat these three scoops of dairy, I don't know if I'll make it home without a tour. If it's vegan, you did not eat dairy. Oh, only one of the three scoops. Oh, vegan. okay. I thought right. the whole no, thing was non-dairy. No, okay, uh, I'm following you. That now. was a thirty-three percent mistake. Sixty-six <laughs> percent of the ice cream cone was real dairy. I got uh, cherry. Was it black cherry? Black cherry. Uh huh. The and cookie butter. The cookie butter, and then caramel delight. Caramel delight. Can't All three in the same cone. Oh, stacked on top. Once you get done with one, you just get excited again because you got a whole different new flavor. Uh, according to Metro on the Move, vegan equals made of vegans. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, I hope not. I don't even know what to do with that, oh to be honest Elizabeth. with you. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with that. we got a few comments on here real quick I want to throw up. I don't want to throw up. I want to put some comments up. Um, <laughs> but Ben McMillan says, is it too late to watch Rob out or to switch Rob out for this nice lady? Right, oh, exactly. Yeah, everybody yeah. likes Chanel. Everybody likes yeah. Chanel. Uh, we've got King of the Woods already asking for the poop chat. Don't worry, it's coming. Oh boy, it always comes. Uh, and then Jeff Peters, I thought Go Next was going to be the title sponsor. Ooh. Oh, how many years has that been going? 
since 2020. Ever since I've since known the Show Brothers. Show That's brothers. been going on for four you years, so man. You were so excited about Go Next. You were well, so excited. <laughs> it's fun, man. <laughs> Go next. They still email me every once in a while. Really? And the funny thing is, they never know they've ever contacted me. I know. I've every gotten 15 time. different emails from them, and they always <laughs> and I've always told them no, or you can send <laughs> yeah. it, but I'm not promising you anything. It's always and a different person. Yeah. Some, you you, you want to hear something funny? So Midwest Backpacker, he gets a lot of these emails, right? Yeah. And he finally got one from Go Next. Uh, and that was the point he felt like he made it on YouTube. Oh, he is. <laughs> if you're so, getting it from Gonad. You're welcome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, good job, bud. Good, good job, Jeremy. I'm proud of you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten an email from them yet. Oh, you've not made it, man. You've not made it. I'm working on it. It's I'm on the way. You've not made it. So, okay, Rob, several years ago, you know, we, uh, we talked about that, that backpacking trip. And this mm -hmm. is the first time you and I have actually been in the presence of each other since that trip. That's correct. And that was a while ago. But it feels like... It feels like I see you all the time. I know. it's right? uh, We chat. Yeah. We chat a lot, but we never see each other. Correct. So I'm going to be honest with you. When I saw you tonight, I might have got a little emotional. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I saw that, you, and right? I and, and I might have, the pit of my stomach, I might have gotten a little sick, and, you really? know. Yeah. Wait, that's not right. Um, <laughs> yeah, was that like three scoops of ice cream talking? No, it was more <laughs> like I was just, it was like, I missed you. Oh, I appreciate that. And we're glad you're here. Yeah, well, um, thank you for having me. And, and I hate the fact that everybody's making fun of you. You oh, know. no, I deserve it 100%. Actually, I think it's, actually, I think it's hilarious. Where was y'all's first but trip at? Kettle with, Moraine. Kettle Moraine, up in Wisconsin. Up in Wisconsin. In, in, oh, okay, I don't know anything about it. In February. <laughs> yeah, okay, it was supposed to be their first winter backpacking trip. Uh -huh. And for the Kentucky boys and the Ohio boys, it was. But for, like, myself, Midwest backpacker, it was, like, summertime. It wasn't cold. It got down to, what, 20? That's child's it play. It got below 20. Child's play. 20's cold. Was it snowy? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it was about a foot of snow. Yeah. Foot of snow yeah, on the ground. Yeah, there was about a foot of snow. I remember having to dig out a spot for my uh, stuff for my hammock. Yep. What about water? We buried through? our water at night so it wouldn't freeze. That's right. And like half the guys, their water still froze. Yes, <laughs> right. yeah. The snow wasn't deep enough. Yeah, no I remember. filter casualties. Yeah, no. no, no, no. We were all good. No, it was a good trip though. Yeah, we got trip. free little debbies on that trip. If you remember that. That's right. We had, had some trail oh, magic. Oh, wait a second. Is this okay, so so here's the story. Yeah. Here's the story. Yeah, we're okay. we're all hiking, um, and we we hit a road. So we stopped on the side of the road, and we all set up for lunch. And so we're all just sitting there chowing down, and all of a sudden this random car comes up and, and says, are you Dan Becker? And so Dan goes and takes pictures. All this. Well, another car comes up, and we're all like, oh, here comes a Dan Becker fan. <laughs> it wasn't. He just comes up and goes, are you guys a bunch of hikers? We're like, yeah. He goes, you want some little Debbies? <laughs> no, it was Girl he, Scout cookies. It was Girl Scout was cookies. Girl That's Scout right. Cookies. It was Girl Scout cookies. And so he goes, he goes, you guys want some Girl Scout cookies? And we're all like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he gave us each a box of Girl yeah, Scout I remember. cookies. It was so good. It was awesome. But when Dan Becker got recognized, he couldn't even put his hat on anymore because his head swelled so much. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was like, yeah, see. Well, it, I think the funniest awesome. thing was, was how bent out of shape Jeremy was because nobody recognized him. <laughs> oh. He's like, so I guess I'm not Dan Becker. <laughs> and Jeremy, I love you, buddy. Hey, Rob. Can oh, look at this. He's, he just said Rob makes everyone's stomach turn. Wow, see, that's how I do it. That's he the loves magic you. Of me. Can you he loves tell him about the, the recognizing the stuff? Y'all went backpacking with I Mr. Love backpacking this. With I Jason love this Sir? story. So a few days ago, <laughs> Listen to this. Mr. Backpacking with Jason, <laughs> sir, was kind enough to take Janelle and I on a backpacking trip through the Red River Gorge. Which is it, awesome. It, amazing place. If you don't know about the Red River Gorge, it, it, it's an amazing place to backpack. And this is Backpacking with Jason's Backyard. His whole YouTube channel, a lot of it is based on mm -hmm. that, and he's like Mr. Red River Gorge backpacking, right? Mm -hmm. and if you need to know about Red River Gorge, you contact Jason. Yeah. So we were hiking down from Double Arch, you know, and coming downhill, and we yielded to, oh, no, a group yielded to us coming down. And then the guy stops, and he looks at me, and he goes, you're Rob Pelton. And I was like, yeah, I am. And I went to motion to Jason, like, hey, this is Jason. But he almost, like, pushed Jason out of the way <laughs> to shake my hand. You know, <laughs> and I was oh, like, yeah, I, really, I appreciate the channel. And but I was so flustered because, you know, I, I, I'm not used to it. Janelle was was uh, quick enough to be like, oh, hi, what's your name? I didn't ask the dude's name, but his name was John. Right. It's got a great name. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> really cool guy. Like very that. gracious. And he actually sent me a, a, an Instagram message saying, hey, it was great meeting you. I know it wasn't a place you know, or the time to have a conversation, but I was glad to meet you. So I appreciate that, John, if you're watching. It was awesome meeting you. And uh, hopefully you got to the double arch because it was awesome up there. Yeah. A Midwest Backpacker responded to my comment about him being upset. And he said those cookies didn't sit well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it didn't. He, he had a bad time. Uh, he threw he threw those cookies. He, yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So, OK. Let's talk about Leave No Trace. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're, we're getting we're pretty now. Right. Let's talk. Janelle gave us a little backstory mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, 
how you guys got involved in it, and right. you gave a little backstory on that. So what I want to know is, can you fill us in on what are the basic principles of Leave No Trace? Because obviously you have memorized at this point. Uh, yes, we do, and I could have help from Janelle. She knows them just as well as I do. We teach. We actually teach workshops together. We actually teach like. But she's you know, giving dirty looks right now. I don't know if she uh, wants to. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm not. just saying. Maybe not. So there, there are seven <laughs> principles of Leave No Trace, and keep in mind these aren't rules. These aren't things where if you don't do these when you're outdoors, then you're the worst person on the planet. No, these are just a set of principles that we hope you keep in mind just to, uh, to make a smaller impact while you're out there. Because we're already outdoors, we're already making an impact just for us being there, right? Mm -hmm. But are there things you can keep in mind just to minimize it? Right. Yes, there are, right? And obviously, if you want way more information, you can hop onto lnt.org. There's a lot of stuff there, and there's a lot of YouTube videos on the different principles as well. But I'll walk you through them, and I won't just walk you through them. I'm going to do hand signals with them as well. <laughs> All right, you going to do them? You going to do them with me? I'm going to observe. Okay, come on, let's do it right here. All right. All right. There are <laughs> leave there no are, trace. There are seven principles to leave no trace. Yeah, All right. Seven. First one is plan ahead and prepare. Right. Look at the weather. Look at your permits. Look where you're going. Make sure you're getting all your gear together. So plan ahead and prepare. Is this like, like Detroit? It's like your list. Right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. All right. Principle number two. Two. Travel oh. and camp on durable surfaces. Wait a second. So, I mean, there's an established trail there. Try to stick to it to concentrate the impact that's already there. Now, there, are, there is dispersed hiking and things like that, yes. But when possible, you know, especially with a larger group, try to stay on trail. And when you get to camp, use an existing campsite because they say good campsites are found, not made. All right? Principle number three. Oh, three. This is a little garbage picker. Dispose oh. of waste properly. And that goes for garbage and also human waste. So now your three turns into a trowel. You dig your cat hole. Oh, oh look, at your look at that. Right? Yeah. So three, dispose of your waste properly. Your tripod becomes a trowel. Yeah, right? Principle number four. Oh, wait, that's not four. Yes. One, One, two, three, four. Leave what you find and take a picture instead. Right? So oh, look, look, let's say you found look a, at that. Awesome, some like, field in the middle of nowhere full of awesome flowers, right? Well, take a picture of that. Let the next person who finds that field as well enjoy it just as much as you did. Because if everyone took a flower, well, there would be no flowers left. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so take a picture, leave what you find, all right? Principle number five, we do this, oh. right? What, what do you think this is? <laughs> a dangerous bunny rabbit. Yeah. That's what I was it's, thinking. It's, it's not stay away from porcupines, right? Oh, that's a good one, yeah. porcupines. It's minimize campfire impacts. Oh, it's fire. a fire. Oh, my God. Okay. We're quick. Jason, We're quick. Back back yeah, Jason, have your campfire. Awesome. You know, but when you leave, make mm -hmm. sure it's out. And when I say out, make sure it's out, out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, can I tell you something? Yes. Grayson Highlands, a few years ago, went with Miyagi and Trips. Yeah. And uh, my buddy Josh and Hunter's Trip. You know oh, Hunter? Know okay. Him. So we all went to Grayson Highlands. And Josh and I are hiking on our way out. And there's billowing smoke coming across the trail serious and somebody had left the fire just smoldering yeah see and there was a flame that was starting to come up again and we barely had enough water to make it to the end of the trail and we ended up having to use a full bottle of water between the two of us to put out their fire right so if you leave a, a bed of coals there if it the wind picks up it can spark up those embers oh yeah you know, that's it, exactly what yeah, happened and then those embers could Float and then cause a forest fire because most forest fires are actually man made. Hey man, uh, Ben McMillan says you need another YouTube channel doing shadow puppets. All right, oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> hey, let me ask you about the campfire thing. Yeah. So let's say that you're, you're dry camped, you're leaving camp, you had a fire, mm -hmm. you're out of water. Okay. What would you do in that situation? Uh, I assume it's depending on the circumstances. Maybe you're in the desert, maybe you're in the woods, whatever. Dirt. Well, hopefully you went to back to principle one and planned ahead and prepared. But I didn't. Okay. I didn't. <laughs> All right. If you didn't, then you're going to want to disperse those ashes as, as much as possible. Right? Mm -hmm. You want to get those to burn out. But hopefully you're burning firewood that's small enough to be burned all the way through and mm -hmm. not, not burn overnight. So uh, if, if that happens, if you do the best you can, you can throw dirt on it, throw sand on it, snow on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just don't want exposed ember. That's going to be the worst because it, it could spark up. Okay. What about urine? Urine w would be the best, actually. Uh, oh. If that's all you got, pee right on that. That's stuff. all I have. Yep. And you know it's what? Little, You're it's killing easier. two birds with one stone. Yeah. It's a little you know? easier for a guy, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good plan. It's going to smell awful. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, but I will tell you hey. from experience, it does smell terrible. It smells urine, awful. It yes. Smells it's one of the worst terrible. smells but on the face of the planet. That's all you've got, and you got to go anyway. Use it for the fire. Quite effective. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So that was five. That was five. Number six. Oh, number six. Oh, three goggles. Respect, sunglasses. Respect wildlife. Oh. 
Oh, it's right? an owl. Oh, Ears. Like it could be an owl. Respect wildlife. Woo. I was thinking right? moose. Yeah. So oh, moose. I like moose. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It could be a moose. So respect wildlife. Why are we doing there. this right now? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you're outside, I mean, you're 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 we're encroaching in, into their home basically. Right. We're in their living rooms and backyards, right? So just try to minimize your your uh, impact on them, and that goes for like leaving food behind. You don't want them habituated and, and you know, associating people with food, even though that's already happening. Oh yeah. Like, have you heard a fed bear is a dead bear? Yeah. It, I it, haven't heard that. Well, that it, makes sense. Yeah, because the 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 people would have the right. people that run the forest services would have to actually. Execute them basically. Exactly yeah. right. So yeah. So just respect. You think that sounds a whole lot better than yeah, execute? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Execute. <laughs> we get like a firing line. <laughs> can some they not? Re can they relocate some? Yeah, they can. But if they still associate people with food, they're mm. always going to find out. Yeah. There's actually some bears getting so smart they actually can open up a bear canister now. Mm. Well, I was going to say in the Smokies they can open car doors. Yeah. Oh yeah. They they open car doors. I know uh, Tim Watson. Uh, I don't know if you know who Tim Watson yeah, is, but he Tim. he his minivan, <laughs> a bear opened the front door. Crawled into the van, into his minivan, and the door shut behind him. So the bear got stuck in the van and couldn't get oh, out. Oh no! Tore up their van. Wow! Finally, they came out, got well. The side door open thing ran out and took off because it was so scared. Um, so a quick tip: our bears are actually starting to recognize what coolers look like. So mm -hmm. even if you keep your cooler in your car, if they see the cooler in your car, they know there's food in there. So if you're gonna leave it, just put a blanket over it. Or something. These things, bears are getting wow. smart, dude. Seriously. When are they gonna start getting to where you say, "Hey bear," and they go, "What?" Hey boo boo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, and then the last principle: <clears throat> want to wave at your people, give them a piece, be considerate of others, right? Yeah. Or, or maybe give them a hang loose oh, sign. Oh, sorry. It's, wave. it's supposed to do seven. Yeah, my bad. Wave and hang loose, because basically you're outside enjoying the outdoor space just like they are. Right, they may enjoy the the nature a little bit differently. You, right. but that doesn't mean it's wrong, right? So respect their time in the outdoors. They should respect yours because you know these natural spaces. They're for everybody. Can I can I rant? Absolutely. Oh, let's so, hear it. It's, it's your it. podcast. You're right. It is my podcast. <laughs> Dang it! Listen, don't bring your speaker out there on the trail and play it. at full blast. I don't want to hear your music. Although the uh, Boy Scouts that we caught in Alabama one time. Walk in listening to Tom uh, Tom Jones cracked us up a little bit. So, really? it's not unusual <laughs> to be low by anyone. I'm not kidding you. That's what we heard coming down the trail. And it was a bunch of high school boys carrying a okay. boom box. That's the way exception. A boom box. Oh, and I was like, like a legit, legit the boom box holding it over his shoulder. And they're all rocking to Tom Jones coming down. I was like, okay, I'll okay, let that one go. That's the only exception. I'll let that one go. Yeah. Everybody else, stop it. Okay? Stop it. Actually, we talked about whenever we were doing our day hikes this, this weekend about the noise pollution because yep. sometimes I do bring a speaker and we talked about when is the appropriate time to use it. And we, I think we kind of settled on being courteous to others. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it can affect animal behavior too. If you're blasting it, mm -hmm. it, it could, you know, but if a lot of people, they, they're, they're listening to it. So they're not getting bored. Maybe they're doing 30 miles a day and they need, yeah. they need something to break up the monotony. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I know they make little speakers that mount right onto your shoulder straps in your backpack, mm -hmm. hit a button and it pauses. You know, you can pass people and then. Yeah. But uh, there's also headphones. There's also I'm, headphones. I'm sorry, John earbuds. Is exclusive, yeah. no out loud. I do not speaker. like other people's music when mm -hmm. I'm hiking. Yeah, that's fair. I'm like, get some earbuds. Yeah. They make them, they're cheap. Yeah, you're right. You don't that's have to fair. get good ones. Get cheap ones. Yeah, but noise pollution is part of it. Even noise pollution is part of it. If you're at camp with a bunch of people, use your green and red lights. And if you're listening to Taylor Swift, just stop it, okay? Ooh. 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 Oh. Those are fighting oh, words. I'm glad, I'm glad people like words. her, but I don't have to. <laughs> do I have to? No. I don't, Jeremiah. I don't have to like her. Okay, uh, we got a super chat. Actually, I don't mind Taylor Swift for the most part. Um, Derwin off the rails. Oh. The uh, alter ego of Darwin. Uh, he's, awesome. he's got a 999 super chat for us. His principle number eight, steal Jeremiah's pre-dug poop hole once he wanders off. He doesn't oh. mind. There should be a leave no trace principle against stealing already pre-dug poop holes. Well, that, that's actually a pro tip if you know you're going to be in camp. Go ahead and pre-dig your poop hole. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have enough time to dig it. Oh no, there are those days. Yeah. Especially if you're eating Mountain House. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. shots fired. Do they sell? Y'all sell Mountain House here? No, no, this, no. no, no this no is a high quality house. establishment, yeah. bro. <laughs> They're not selling that Bush League stuff. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, we got real bad. That ain't happening here. Yeah. That ain't happening here. So <laughs> look not at this. <laughs> so Backcraft the world said John just invoked the Swifties to war. <laughs> Ooh, see, see, that's a big army, man. You, the that is a big army, dude. We, them to we the just Super lost. Bowl. Like we're gonna lose our sponsorship. Right. Like oh, Obi's gonna get that contract. Say we're not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you you invoke the Swifties. It's over. You don't want to fight the Swifties, dude. Uh, you're right. 
I mean, they did make this the most viewed Super Bowl in the history yes, of Super Bowls. The Taylor oh. Swift effect, man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Crazy. So, um, okay, so those are the eight principles. Seven. Eight. No, the eighth. You forgot oh, the eighth one. Pre -dug oh, yeah, we the pre-dug pre holes. We got pre-dug holes. Okay, fair. Yeah. We got eight principles now, so I hope you all are paying attention. <laughs> Take notes, folks. And you What's thought I made a mistake. That's yeah, the best hey, part hey, about hey. it. What's so. the most egregious that you see out there? I mean, a lot of it's trash, honestly. Yeah. yeah it's just trash, and but a lot of it is incidental trash. You, you get a granola bar and you tear the corner off, and maybe you lose the corner, mm -hmm. right? Or maybe you lose the, the bottle cap off your bottle. Right? Yeah. Those are the things that add up really, really, really big because a lot of people think, oh, it's just the corner. Yeah, but if a thousand people will visit that park that weekend, well, that's a lot of corners. Well, and if an animal happens to eat it, right, it could choke them and kill them. It could. I mean, it's very realistic. Right. Like, Cause, yeah, because there's food sound on it. Yeah, that's well, plastic. Yeah. You know, they don't know any better. So, what about the non-synthetic stuff, meaning uh, banana peel. I mean, maybe you okay. take uh, an apple out there, you peel it, or maybe the little halos, or right. So, so that's kind of a controversial thing, and, and I'm trying not not to get too too preachy here. Uh, but Tyler taps me on the shoulder as he says, preachy. John, no music I like that. So, so, John. So, so a lot of people they're like, yeah, banana peel, orange peel, apple core. Those yeah. are natural things. Those are okay to throw out in the out in the environment. Right. So yes, they are natural. Yes, they will decompose thankfully. And uh, like a banana peel can take up to up to two years, honestly, in, in a normal environment. Um, but a lot of those things really aren't in an animal's natural diet, you know, mm -hmm. unless they live on an apple orchard or something, right? But for the most part, no. But you're discarding those on the side of the trail. Now it's bringing animals to the side of the trail. Now you're increasing animal people, you know, uh, proximity. And there are, there are animals that are so habituated to humans and have food, they actually get aggressive if you don't have food. Yeah. Right. Some animals are even losing the ability to forage food for themselves because they don't have to anymore. Right. They know where campsites are. They know where campsites are. Mm -hmm. Right. So that that's a big thing. So we do consider those kinds of things litter. And those are things that we, we should pack out. That is that's actually one of the things that's made the Red River Gorge so great is that there's so much bear hunting in eastern Kentucky. Is there? Bears don't like coming around humans in the Red River Gorge. You'll rarely ever, if thankfully, ever, see thankfully, a bear. Thankfully. If ever see a bear because they're terrified of humans. Maybe the Clifty Wilderness area is the only place, and that's kind of like, I mean, that's at the gorge, but it's kind of like outside it. Yeah. Is what I would consider it. Yep. That, that's a good thing because there's a lot of people in the gorge. I mean, climbers too. A lot oh, yeah. Of climbers. Yeah. They, you just don't see, you may see some scab, but you'll never see a bear. Interesting. It's, have you ever seen a bear? Seen. And no, I've been, I've been there. The interior part. I just figured there's so much foot traffic through there that yeah, it kind of just keeps them all away. Well, when know. we were hiking, we we actually didn't see that much garbage. Surprisingly, there are a couple of spots that were old dump sites from way way back. But yeah, for the most part, we didn't see a lot of trash on. That's because Kentucky's awesome. That, yeah, we, that's very impressive. Just want to say it, my Kentucky friends that are here. Do we agree? Oh, see, man. there we go. There we go. We love our <laughs> Kentucky people. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we do have another super chat from Ben McMillan. Oh, fantastic. But before I show that, there is a ban button on here, people. You need to understand this. Oh. And our, our buddy, Midwest Backpacker, just said Ohio State is trash. Wow. Uh, and I'm just telling you, bro. Wow. You're risking a lot here. Oh, I'm just saying. You're about to break out the ban hammer? I'm saying I'm about, I'm about, to, I'm about to get preachy, okay? <laughs> so just watch it, pal. Um, but Ben McMillan got on here, and he said, uh, <laughs> he said 1999 from Ben McMillan uh, so that we can get an Eras Tour movie re rental so we can watch the, Swift, the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. So, eh, we'll think about it. Oh, thanks, Ben. I might well, use that we appreciate you, Ben, but I'm probably going to use that 1999 to get a steak with this guy or something. <laughs> so uh, we also got a super chat, 499 from Spencer Davis. He says, I've been listening to the background for the last six months. I appreciate what you all do. Oh, thank oh, you so much. listening in the Spencer. background. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Thanks, Spencer. Appreciate that, man. Okay. So now that's the nice part of Leave No Trace. Mm, uh -oh. boy, Tell us go. about the seedy underground, <laughs> the seedy of, underground of Leave No Trace. Oh, boy. What is the seedy what underground? Is there, is there a Leave No Trace mafia? Uh, there is, unfortunately. Now, a lot of them are anonymous keyboard cowboys <laughs> who get very internet bullying into shaming in the name of Leave No Trace. Right. We're not in the market of shaming people about what they do, okay? We, we, we hope to make an impact for long-term behavior change, right? So there's a lot of people in the name of Leave No Trace, you're doing that wrong, you need to do this, da 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 No, that's, that's, not, that's not how we approach things, right? Because that might... That might affect short-term behavior change, right? Mm -hmm. But most of the time, if someone's yelling at me, I, I naturally want to do the opposite. Yeah, I was going to say, I've never seen an argument where you got yelled at, and at the end, you're like, you know what? 
you're, you're right. calling me an idiot, so now I feel better about <laughs> oh, yeah, it. So know, now yeah. I'm going to listen to you. So <laughs> thank you. Exactly right. And then also keep in mind, as far as leave no trace goes, there's never a leave no trace emergency. Like, if that doesn't happen instantly, you know what I mean, then the, the whole world's going to, you know, Maybe explode or something, but um, it's just things to, to help reverse some of the impacts over time. Yeah, That's yeah. It. Well, I was going to say, if there's a Leave No Trace Reddit, don't go there. Oh, oh probably, yeah. That would be a dark place. Don't, right. don't do it. No doubt. Let no, me don't ask do you a, a challenging question here on the Leave No Trace front. Okay. All right. Oh, no. Seatbelt? You got your seatbelt Oh, on? no. Woo, right. buddy. Here we go. What would Leave No Trace people say about uh, Leave No Trace versus the wide impact that just everyday life and commerce has on the environment. Uh, so a lot of that's front country, right? Like just everyday stuff. So obviously mm -hmm. when we get into garbage and we get into recycling, mm -hmm. uh, there are things that uh, we, sh we should probably do better on. Uh, recycling especially, uh, aluminum cans are infinitely recyclable. So those things should be recycled. But uh, I know there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of things coming off the ground, like biodegradable packing materials, and there's different like uh, funguses, like mushrooms that eat plastic now, and they're trying to scale these things up. But right now, they're not they're not large enough to make any real effect in in, in the world. But uh, the plastic bags you get from the grocery stores, mm -hmm. those are probably one of the worst things. So take but less of those. Take less of those. I mean, so we should burn them. Yeah, 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 send them yeah. to the right atmosphere. The fireplace, right, exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, that won't do anything, right? right? That doesn't do anything to the environment. So we're we're to a point now where you know, since we live out of our car, like we use those those plastic bags for garbage. You know, we throw yeah. them in the garbage. But mm -hmm. those things shouldn't end up in re in recycle bins because those will actually jam up a recycler, and then that whole load just goes in the garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we're to a point now where we have our reusable bags, and when we say no, n we don't need a bag, they look at us like, you don't what? What do you mean? I don't understand. It's like no, we got bags. It's fine. You know, but we already have 10,000 bags in our car, and everyone else probably has a million bags under their mm -hmm. sink right now, right? Yeah, so, yeah, we don't need any more bags. So we'll use reusable bags. It's funny that you say that because Mary gets on here and says, Leave No Trace should be losing their minds on plastic grocery bags. Uh, it is. That is of, the worst. You're, you're right. And they're, yeah. I mean, I know uh, th there's some other companies that, that are, are going bagless as well so which is a step in the right direction but uh like I, aldi you, there's no aldi. bags at aldi right mm, it's a grocery no. store you know aldi yeah there's one where i live yeah okay yeah you gotta bring they your don't own, give you bags yeah you gotta bring your own bag at aldi and they don't give you a shopping cart either yeah you gotta pay you gotta it. well you don't pay the quarter you gotta put the quarter in and then unlocks the cart the carts are chained together see i think yeah, that's right. just dumb well people will, <laughs> <laughs> people just leave the quarter in i'm there, cool so. with the bag thing but come on bro well, let you me use a quarter, quarter back. I don't care. It's dumb. It, it, makes, it, it makes you return. It doesn't matter. It you doesn't get too matter. many quarters. It's That's dumb. what it sounds like. It's just dumb. I don't carry, I don't carry change. Quarter. Well, if you don't carry change with you, now I got to carry everything in my arms. Well, maybe right. you're buying too many groceries. Did you think of that? Oh, maybe, maybe. I got two kids and a wife I got to feed. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> so, Touche, John. Maybe I need more groceries, <laughs> Jeremiah. <All right. laughs> but yeah, larger as a whole, if, if, unless some of these larger corporations really take a big stance on it, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard to change. Subaru, who's, one, who, who's our title sponsor, it's actually the 25th uh, anniversary of Subaru uh, sponsoring the traveling teams. Mm -hmm. Their automotive plant in Indiana is a 100% zero landfill plant. Oh, wow. Everything that they make goes back in to the process. Oh, that's cool. Back, yeah, it's amazing. We're actually taking a tour of it here in a couple months. Hey, oh, that's let really me make cool. a PSA for Subaru drivers. I already <laughs> uh, complained to you about yeah, this. Yeah. Um, oh, no, here it comes. So if you drive a Subaru, maybe you're one of the people that passed me by. I was doing the Vermont Long Trail, and we hitchhiked a lot. Wait a lot. second. Did you do the Long Trail? I did the Long Trail. I don't know if you've heard. I didn't know did if you, you did that one. Did you hear about that? That's cool that you've done that. One time on the Tell Long us about Trail, it. <laughs> I was hitchhiking and got passed by a Subaru multiple times, over and over. Didn't get picked up by a single Subaru driver the entire time. So I'm convinced that they don't care about the environment. And they, oh, no, they care, care about, about the hikers. environment. They don't care about you. Well, the, wouldn't they want to pick Maybe they don't like that Oliver Anthony song, and they think you look oh like him. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> you know how many times I got the Oliver Anthony? Yes. I only say that because somebody <laughs> made the comment on here. so good. That Let me see so where it's good. at. Uh, here it is right here. What about all the backpacking Chris? Backpacking Chris said, sing us a song, Oliver Anthony. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's going on, hikers? So did any other cars pass you? 
Uh, no, it was mostly Subarus. Those are the ones you noticed. It was the only, maybe it was one of those things where, you know, when you buy something and you have it and then you notice everybody else also has one. Maybe well, I, it was I one find of those it things. like whenever I wear a jean jacket, I see all the other jean jackets out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see? But I'm, I think it was mostly Subarus. Okay. And they didn't, pay, they didn't I think you, I time. think you just really get irritated at the rich men north of Richmond. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I could be wrong on that, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking. Is that's what that's what happens. So PSA Subaru drivers, um, if somebody is a backpacker, not an axe murderer, okay, just like How a do regular. You know? I mean, you got to just trust in the process, you know. Fair, fair. <laughs> so so pick Jeremiah, your, pick up your hitchhiker Subaru drivers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe they know what you smell like. Oh, there. You or maybe now let's just shoot straight. Experience. A lot of Subaru drivers like for their Subarus to smell good. Picking up rude? backpackers is not going to make that Subaru smell too good. Am I right? Well, I think I you're most, A lot of them have dogs in their car. So. I love yeah, dogs. Yeah, but have you smelled a backpacker well, compared to a dog? Oh, yeah, I smelled myself just the other I know, day. I was going to say. <laughs> and you have to drive a Subaru. <laughs> yeah, we so you're, you're bucking Subaru. the whole system yeah, right now. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I, you guys want to You guys want to trigger some people? Oh, man. nothing. I know I you do. More. Otherwise, you want to ask. Dude. I love it. All right. He's coming out swinging in. This is my thing, bro. This is what I enjoy. So so here we got some great. Now, this is other people's comments. I'm reading other comments. Yeah, pop them up here. So, okay. Two comments, both about the same topic. Uh, Karen's convo causes so much drama. LOL. Um, Steve Wright, Karen's are backcountry text messages. (laughs) What are your thoughts on Karen's, Mr. Leave No Trace? Oh, my goodness. Uh, (laughs) So so should I preface, like, yes, I work for Leave No Trace. Yes, I try to influence behavior. But I am not like the end all be all of New York City, okay? <laughs> Aren't you the official spokesperson uh, representative? That's what of I all thought. No, He's traveling I, the country I, doing I, this. I am a very, very small part of a larger initiative, right? But anyways, He's what so, he's really saying is Janelle's in charge. Uh, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he's really saying. Uh, Karen's so Karen's have a place in certain trails. Yeah. Like as far as navigation markers. Mm-hmm. Now the Karen's that you see out on trail, I mean, even the National Park Service has advised you to knock them over. But if you're going to knock those over, dismantle them because things could have taken up residence in them, right? Especially in streams. There are things that live in rocks and under rocks and streams. Mm. So Karens, as, as cool as you think they are, Karens shouldn't be built where, where they're, they're not adding any navigational benefit. Yeah. Oh, I know like trails like the Uinta, the Uinta Trail. I didn't um, do Uinta, but... That, that, I know that trail, there's places where you're just walking across a giant field. Right. And those cairns are out there, I guess, to actually help Absolutely. you know where to go. Right. But I think those are there for that reason. Correct. I mean, in, in Iceland, there's cairns all over the country, and those were there from, like, the Viking times because that's how they navigated those landscapes. Yeah. Right? So that's what cairns were originally for. They're, they're signposts, right? And sure, they might be modern-day text messages, too, but, you know, uh, stacking rocks is cool. But unnecessary. Do you see this? I like that. These, you handled uh, that one well, man. That was great. You know, I try to be as diplomatic as possible. You, you did good. <laughs> like, I'm impressed. I I was like, can I bust him on one? And he can't. You won't let me, dude. You're just Rob, too good at what you do. Well, you know what's funny is, like, my bosses are probably going to see this and be like, you didn't tell us you are going to be on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Did. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. We are leave no trace people. Like, <laughs> we really are. I just, I got to give this guy a hard time because we like him. But, um. Okay, so what's this? What are we looking uh, at? Yeah, the giant salamander. Yeah, the hellbenders they're called. Yeah, the yeah. Smoky Mountains. Yeah. What yeah, now? This is these hellbenders. Like this one, I mean, people can't see online. Y'all have to Google this. I mean, I can give you a little taste here, but the um, the hellbenders in the Great Smoky Mountains, um, they are. I don't know if it's endangered or about to be endangered, see but that, that one's on dead. Screen. You see that mm-hmm. one? So upside down, and what's disturbing them is Karens. Yeah, the Cairns people building these rock piles in these creeks in the Smoky Mountains. That's Clay County, North Carolina. That picture's from. But they're building these Cairns, and uh, it's disrupting the natural habitat of the, that specific species. I right. don't know about all of it, but it's hurting the population. Well, I mean, they, I mean look at that and putting up signs, right, just exa- telling people don't move. Right, exactly. And you know, if you're building big enough things, now you're changing currents. Mm-hmm. That can that can affect fish behavior, and, and it, there, there's a lot. And it, and it, you know, sure, a Karen here and there, yeah, they pop up, but like just a sea of Karens, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's it's an impact. Let me see if I can show you. That's also where you hear a lot of complaining. Correct, I agree. A sea of Karens. Yeah, don't be sea a Karen, Karens. Karen. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. I have. Uh, there's this one spot on the Long Trail. I don't know if y'all heard about this. <laughs> I done the Long Trail. Who was this? And. <laughs> 
Have you done a long trail? Where yeah. is that? Is that in Massachusetts? It's a, it's a long trail in Massachusetts. It's in Massachusetts? To, no, it, it, it <laughs> starts in. It starts on the border of Vermont, Massachusetts. Um, I was going to show you this spot. There's a spot on the trail that it's like a whole. Look at yeah. that. Yep. Yep. This whole area is all just people going and building cairns. It's like a whole littered area, and right. it's in the guidebooks and everything. Interesting. I can't remember what it's called, but I wonder, uh, is this okay, leave no trace wise? Well, that, I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of depends. Are, are they just uh, tourists coming there and just stacking these for the sake of it? Yeah, this Th is does what it have a cultural significance? I mean, that's different. No, I don't think so. I think well, this is just this is just an area on the long trail where it's known for all the cairns, right. and people just go up there so and one stack. One day, and someone take stacked rocks, and everyone was like, well, that's a good place to stack rocks. Well, if you ask me, it looks like it's built for stacking rocks. Look at all those it rocks. It is now. Well, I'm trying to bring something up here. Everybody's seeing my screen, and they're not seeing what I want them to see. But now I think they're seeing. There it is right there. Okay. So if people are watching online, there's what those hellbenders look yeah, like. It's like a giant salamander. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty massive. They can get two to three feet. Yeah. It's it. Yeah, they're massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they live under big rocks. Really? In rivers, yeah. That's wild. I That's know kids. Wild. Kids like to build those in creeks and stuff, the cairns. Yeah. Yeah. What about beaver, man? We were down in... Um, <laughs> We were down in Big South Fork, and these beavers had dammed up this whole section of the creek or river, and it's like stopping water flow, of course, right, like right, a dam does. Right. Are we supposed to go in and remove those as like forest service, or are you supposed to leave that all natural? Because I know a lot of people on their private land, you know, that's blocking waterways. Maybe people need it for Downstream, cattle right. or the fish population or whatever. So if, if there's a big beaver population in a specific area, should those be trapped? and taken out and remove the dams I mean, or do you let it right. go that's something like that's going to be well above my purview um a lot of like i mean land managers probably have to get involved i mean that that's a whole ecological question that's yeah above and beyond me mm. um my personal opinion i mean it, it depends on what it's affecting you know if, if, if that water is someone's livelihood Maybe, but the beaver, were they there first? Were these other mm -hmm. people there first? Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Well, there used to be a lot more beaver around here, I'll tell you that. Because, I mean, all the beaver trapping and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They I smell beaver. awful. Yeah, I hate beaver. They're Beavers terrible. are just gross. Y'all like beaver? I think they're cute. I heard Brian Winburn up here, he eats beaver. <laughs> Is that true? He hunts them. <laughs> the pelts. For those of you who could After not hear him just days now. On trail, I'll eat some beaver, sure. If you look at if, if Jeremiah put it on the front row, wave at us there, Brian, so everybody can see you. Brian is a longtime subscriber of the channel and uh, our YouTube channels as well. And uh, we got to meet last year at the Red River Gorge. So uh, good dude. Good dude. So, okay. Rob. Man, okay. <laughs> right, He's go. getting pelted. Rob. Where are you heading next? Where am I heading next? After this, we're heading to Arkansas. Really? Buffalo mm. National River. Very cool. Now, let me be honest with me. How awesome is it just getting to travel around all these places um, and do this for a yeah, job? What's it really look like, man? So, day, what's the day to day? All right, here, here's what it is. So, a lot of people, so we, yes, we live and work out of a Subaru, okay? What and kind it, of Subaru? It's a Subaru Outback Wilderness, and it's got a wrap on it that has, says Leave No Trace. I mean, it's it's pretty loud. You can see us coming. It's right? pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, and it, which means, you know, when we're driving, you know, we got to kind of be, you know, conscious of that. Yeah. You can't just, you know, just flip everyone off as we're driving. You double park it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just right. <laughs> so, but what's really cool is this lifestyle, it's very similar to, like, van life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're living and working out of the car. We're, we get to visit all these really, really cool places. We, there's different sunrises and different sunsets we see every day. We get to meet people from all over, different cultures, different foods. It's awesome, right? And it's a very romantic idea. Oh, you get to do all this stuff. But there's actual work that needs to be done. Right. We need to prep for courses. We need to prep for workshops because we work with all the big land management areas and a lot of their park staff to you know, incorporate a lot of these principles into their park and how to interact with visitors, things like that. So we got to learn about the area, learn about their particular impacts, and, and design workshops and courses uh, around that. So there is a lot of prep work. But the cool part is, now that we know all these things, our prep time went from days to hours. Right. And now we can spend some time and get out on trail and visit people and do podcasts and actually you know, do these cool things instead of just being locked up at a campsite working on a PowerPoint presentation or, or working about how to speak Leave No Trace, right? So now we're, we're starting to find that sweet spot and it, it's, it's, a, it's a cool job. I mean, it, it, it really is. You know, and the people we work with in the home office, super supportive. I mean, anything we need, they're like, we got you. You know, it's, it's awesome. 
That is pretty cool. Yeah. So what what places have you – how long have you been doing this first off? Started in January. Started in January. Yeah. So how many – what places have you been to so far? So we flew into uh, Boulder in January where we did our training and onboarding. And from there, they're like, all right, here's your car. Here's your rooftop tent. Here's your stuff. Here's your schedule, at least for the first few months. Have a good time. We drove from Boulder down to Texas. And we, Whoa. Yeah, down to Texas. Whoa, yeah. how long was that? It wasn't that bad. I mean, we split it up over a couple of days. And, um, and we, we well, I guess it's closer than Kentucky is to Texas. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah okay. But, and, uh, and we try to find, like, dispersed camping spots. We try to camp free as much as, mm-hmm. as we can or crash it in, like, friends and houses. That's, that's even better. Um, but uh, we, we went to Texas, and then we, we did a couple of workshops there. And then we went to Louisiana for uh, an American Camping Association conference. And it happened to be during Mardi Gras. <laughs> Whoops! Right, so it's a rough fingers, life, dude. Yeah. So angry. So we were at this big convention center at a booth. Then we gave like a two-hour presentation. And the rest of the time was Mardi Gras, right? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, it was fantastic. Bourbon Street, the whole nine. Uh, then from there, we headed into Florida. We were in Florida for almost a month. You know, uh, all the way down to Miami, all the way up like to Jupiter. To I mean, uh, we did all kinds of stuff. So was this car brand new when you got it? Uh, there was one team before us who had it. So it's a twenty. Three, I believe. Yeah. And I think next year we'll get the 24 because Subaru wants the newest, latest car on the road, obviously. So how many miles have you put on this thing so far? Exactly uh, what I was thinking. I got to know. Like, that's, that's a lot of miles, there's, man. There's 20,000 miles on it now. And how many miles did we start with? I, I don't know. 13,000. So, yeah. So we put like 7,000 miles on. Yeah, Already. but in, in just like what? A couple, couple months. months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, and then from Florida, we went up to Georgia, and where I met up with Metro and, and Senior Hiker 77. John, Andy, what's up? Uh, where I, I camped with them, and uh, we actually got to visit like mountain crossings, and got, went to Brasstown Bald, uh, which is really, really cool. And then uh, from there, we're in Kentucky. That's awesome. Yeah. And you've got, you, you're going to Arkansas. Yep. Then you're going to be heading back to Virginia soon for uh, Trail Days in May, yes, right? Yeah, so Leave No Trace. Us will be at Trail Day. So if you're in Damascus, come say hi. Uh, we're going to be uh, partnering with uh, uh, Osprey. So that is really cool, man. Yeah. I bet you're hating this. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> it yeah. just sounds awful. It's just amazing coming from what we were doing. Janelle, she was an educator for almost 20 years, right? What? It, yeah, right? She's, <laughs> she's not old enough to have been doing that for 20 years. <laughs> right? And, you know, I was in like logistics what? and stuff like that for a long yeah. time. We were both just like. I like how you say logistics. Yeah. That, that's mm-hmm. code for FedEx. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. I FedEx, know that one. Operations logistics uh, uh, manager, but I think you made a huge step up, and I think it's awesome. Uh, it, it it is great. I think it's awesome. It, it's cool that my phone doesn't ring a hundred times a day. <laughs> yeah, um, I will say though, uh, years ago I did I did a video and I asked a bunch of uh, YouTubers to send me videos of yeah. what they're doing during COVID. Yeah. And y- one of the videos was from you. It was you telling people to quit ordering crap from Amazon. <laughs> 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 I was COVID like our work went like overdrive during COVID because everyone stayed home and just started ordering stuff. Right. I mean, well, they were also making an extra 600 bucks a paycheck. Yeah, so. they were. But, yeah. I mean, it wasn't just like these things. It was like, oh, I'm going to order a whole couch set, three of them, and I live on the third floor and there's no elevator. If you've never watched like, the video, I, I, I pegged him. But Jeremiah was in it. Uh, a bunch of people were in it. And uh, it was hilarious because his video comes out, and I was dying because he's like, He's like, look at this. And it's these huge <laughs> boxes that he's having to carry. So I'm guaranteeing you're right. loving this Leave right. No but Trace the, but stuff. But those FedEx drivers, you know who you are. You, you, you work a lot. I mean, you, you do a very hard job. And, I and I'm thankful for every one yeah, of them. And, 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 I don't, and they may not be as recognized as, as much as they should be yeah. on the employer side, but that's, I'm not going to step into hey, that lane right now. But the, You've seen the videos of people leaving cookies and, you know, Cans of Coke in the, a cooler and oh, stuff for FedEx. Fantastic. Did, you, did you ever get any of that action? Absolutely. Going? So if, if okay. you regularly order stuff, oh, tell and us. You, and, and you leave like Gatorades and like chips and cookies on your front step, we love that. It's, it's like, yeah, cookies, chips. Are you kidding? Absolutely. What, 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 would, what would you say was the best or what would be the go to that you think that everybody should leave? Well, the go to uh-huh. uh, Gatorade water and probably some chips. And the Gatorade flavor? Uh, doesn't it matter. doesn't matter. I like blue. All right, assorted Gatorade. Is that a flavor? Blue. You blue. Mean blue. I think it's cool. Blue. I, that's what I call it too. Blue. I don't. I don't know what it's called. Blue. Rip red. Rush. That's blue. Red. Bob's blue. I, like I don't know. One. That doesn't bother right. me. Ice. But uh, I Ice. remember I delivered. Uh, that's the white stuff. I delivered uh, like yeah. twenty-seven 
freezers, like chest freezers, to this person's house. By yourself? By myself. I, pull, I pulled <laughs> up and, uh, and, I, and I dropped them off on the garage. And they're like, thank you so much. And they gave me $20. Wow. I was like, oh. Well, That's yeah. probably the best thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. my back hurts, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's all right. That's all right, man. Yeah. So, um, a couple of comments on here for you. Metro wanted to give you a heads up or say hey to you. He said, what up, Pelton? was great to see you again. Yeah, you too, Metro. So, uh, it was awesome. I, I, he, he came up. He drove like an hour and a half. Uh, John, senior hiker, seven seven. He drove like a couple hours just to come see me. So, very very cool of you to do that. We were they were kind of like uh, my our hosts in Georgia. That's Even cool. though we didn't get to hike that much because I only had like a day. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we we set up camp and just just chilled at camp and had a great time. Yeah. Sometimes that's better than hiking. Yeah, sometimes it really is. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, that, whoops, I got the wrong one here. Hold up. There we go. Steve Wright. He says, if Rob was driving his Subaru in Vermont, would you pick up Jeremiah if you saw him on the road hi hitching? Oh. If I if I knew it was Jeremiah, probably not. <laughs> if, he was, if he was a stranger, yeah, I'd pick him up. Well, I'll tell you right now, in that car that y'all are driving, I mean, I saw your bedroom in there. I mean, it's tight quarters if you want to pick up a hitchhiker. We cannot pick up nothing. They right got now. bedroom on each side. I think y'all got it perfectly organized. Yeah. Though. You got it built out. Dude, yeah. they got drawers. Oh, I know. It's pretty impressive. I watched your video on that yeah. stuff, man. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Yeah, so if you're looking on out, if you want to know how to build out a Subaru to live out of it, and you can check out my channel. There's a little plug right there. Uh, but I actually go into it and how I set it up, and, and, and it works out pretty well. So the rooftop tent, you said it, and I've yeah. held off my questions about it, but okay. I desperately want to get a rooftop tent to use for my truck okay. to do some overlanding stuff. What kind of rooftop tent do you have? We have a Thule Tapui Foothills tent. A now, what? Why is that significant? That sounds like something you say when you're <laughs> angry at your child. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Tuli Tapui. <laughs> what so the what brand, are you doing? The brand is Tapui. Uh huh. The model is no, no. The brand is Tuli. You know, is like, that how you pronounce that? Yeah. I thought it was Thule. Yeah, that's what everyone everyone thinks is Thule, but it's Tuli. Tuli. Yeah. They, I they had they the no idea. As well. And Thule. the models. The model. The more you know. Is Tapui. Tapui. T e p u i. Yeah. And they, then the submodel is Foothills. Yeah, it's all. I gotta say they missed the mark. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. But the else. reason why this particular tent is really really cool, it goes on half of your roof rack, so it only takes up half. Really. Space on your roof rack, leaving the other half for a bike rack, kayak rack, or. Oh, a that's cool. Bike. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. And, and we sleep up there, and it, it's nice to be up and out of the way. You can catch the breeze up there. I mean, we've been in some some pretty decent storms already, and it's it's held up really well. Uh, I, I wish the pad was a little better. I mean, I'm getting older. I need a little bit. More I'm cushion, right there with you, right? bro. So I'm, I'm right looking there with for you. cushion options for this thing. Yeah. Um, but I got to keep in mind, I can't modify it too much because it's not ours, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if I find something, I'm gonna put it in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, That's it, pretty it's cool. cool. We, we, it, the rooftop tents are nice. I mean, I saw your video yeah. hooking your shoes up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to get the floor dirty in there. Well, they they you actually the they actually make little like bags to put your shoes in. Uh -huh. It's like eighty dollars. Eighty dollars? Yeah, I use the one for a bag. Yeah, for a bag to put shoes and in. Y'all got a carabiner well, that's one, fifty cents. A one dollar carabiner <laughs> works for just fine. It's fine. <laughs> I got you, man. Yeah. And let me ask you this: um, with this living out of the car, have y'all normally we go with the backpack and poop talk? Mm -hmm. Y'all had any close calls living on the road? Uh, as of right now, I mean, our diets, our diets have been pretty good. The journey's long, my uh, friend. The, just that, can I just say that's impressive? Because I was in a band in college, yeah. and we toured a lot. Uh -huh. And when we were on the road, we did not eat well <laughs> at <laughs> all. I mean, so we, I'm <laughs> impressed. We, if you're we, saying we're eating could, well, I'm, like, impressed right now. We could eat better. I mean, like, What's I, eating? I, I, think what our, is it? I think our biggest expense right now actually is food because we actually go out a lot. Uh, we we do try to buy groceries. We buy fruits. You know, buy some vegetables. We try to prepare oh, yeah. meals. Um, but so you we got, got a, a refrigerator in there to yeah yeah I uh, little electric cooler. Yeah, I actually reached out to Iceco. They make those electric fridges, and I said, hey, I'm traveling the country for a year. Can I have a cooler? This man's a genius. And they're they're like they saw the channel and they're like <laughs> yes. So I did I did a review with, uh, on the Iceco cooler, and I'll tell you what, not buying ice every other day at three bucks a bag mm -hmm. is awesome. Being able to keep meat in vegetables at a constant temp was awesome because before it was ice we threw away half of our food and that just hooks up to a cigarette lighter right yeah uh, yeah and we have a little little battery pack that we hook up to and that hooks up to the cigarette lighter it's but like a transformer oh, kind of it, thing it's awesome so they sent me the, the uh, a fridge and they sent me one of the sliders that you just installed okay yeah, yeah i've seen those so i bolted the slider to my platform and it just slides out like butter it is it is so nice it's light years different so what you're saying is we both need to hit them up hit up ice go 
Well, <laughs> they're a good. They're a good fit for what you are doing. Yeah, cause exactly. That's perfect. So since your diet's clean, no big poop scares. Uh, as of right now, no, unless my better half can think of one. Oh, I'm glad you finally admit she's better. She said that's no, good. I don't. I don't have anything poop related. She said. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're gonna do something right now. Janelle, could we use you as our microphone person now? Well, awesome. We we actually put her to work, man. Yeah, that's we right. We actually put her to work. That's right. So, does anybody have any questions? We're going to leave it open to some questions for Rob if you guys have them out here. I know Brian said he could ask a question on a heartbeat. So, Brian, what question do you have for Rob? Oh, he's putting him right on the spot. Well, you said earlier that your first backpacking trip was in Nepal. Yeah. Did you go to Nepal to have your first backpacking trip, or did you happen to be in Nepal and go on a backpacking trip? Um, I had a – it's not a midlife, right? A third – life crisis and i just had to get out of here so i googled cheap places to live and nepal came up as like number one or number two. Oh wow and i was like that sounds cool went to rei bought a backpack didn't even get measured didn't you know it was it turned out to be the wrong size and i just <laughs> bought a ticket to nepal and i just went there and i was like okay well let's hike in the himalayas and that's what i did for three months yeah so you learned the hard way yeah sometimes the best lessons learned are the hard way yeah it's the hard knocks yep any other questions Oh, we got one back here from Chris. So Osprey has a chokehold on the hiking community. What is your favorite packing gear? What do you backpack with? Right now, so I have several backpacks. Um, I, I have a few Waymarks, which is a, a cottage company out of Utah. Uh, those just got stolen, unfortunately, in Denver. Mm. Um, but I would say my, my, my most comfortable backpack for backpacking with some weight is my Gregory Optic. Um, and it, it's a it's a fantastic pack. I can put I can put forty pounds in it, and it feels wonderful. Uh, that's luckily that's at home, and I'm planning on grabbing it when we swing by there. But uh, but I'd like to look at something a little bit lighter. I'm looking at uh, uh, Pilgrim packs. Uh, I'm hoping to look at some of their stuff. Can I so. give you one? It's expensive. They're all expensive. But let me tell you something. I got that. I got the Z Packs Arc Hall really? Ultra. That pack is the best pack I've and ever made in my life. It's made out of ultra material. It's made right? out of ultra material. Okay. It, it's a framed pack. It can hold 40 pounds comfortably, okay. and it weighs 20 ounces. Riz, that's, that's what Pilgrim Duh. does as well. I see it. So, so, so I'm just I, saying. I, it's it's so a good I, pack. So I got my eye out on a new pack, so which means that my options are open right now. If I'm going to go really, really heavy, 25, 28 pounds plus, I'm going to use my Gregory. But most of my loadouts these days for three, four days – Mm -hmm. All in is 23 pounds. Yeah. Right? And sometimes lower than that, just depending on, you know, how many luxury items I take. Now, are you, are you a frameless or a frames pack kind of guy? Uh, well, both. My waymarks were all frameless. And, and I like that, uh, provided it's not too heavy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because your shoulder's going to be in pain. Right. But the biggest reason I like frameless backpacks is because of the hip belt. Because whenever I wear a hip belt, you ever taken a picture of yourself and looked at it later and go, oh, man, I should have did my hip belt. <laughs> Right? Dude, I look in the there. mirror and think I shouldn't have eaten that hamburger. <laughs> so, so, so not having a hip belt is actually really nice. But once you get heavier, you need the hip belt for yeah. that support, right? Um, I'm not light enough to to go strictly uh, a hip beltless at this point. But. Yeah, I just don't. I, I I tried, I tried the frameless pack. Yeah, I'm cool with frames. Okay. That's just, I'm at that point in my life. I'm like, you know, I'm 50, bro. <laughs> like, I'm old. My back is terrible. My knees are worse. I don't need to be like giving myself any reason to have any kind of more pain. Whatever it, you you have to get you outside, use it. Don't say hike your own hike. Let me sell him on one. Don't I say it. I won't do don't it. say I it. I won't do it. Rob, okay, let good. me sell you on one. You got to go with the uh, R call, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put it out there. Hyperlite. Hyperlite. Uh huh. So Metro, I just spent time with Metro on the move. He's a big he, Hyperlite he's fan. A huge Hyperlite. He's guy. got their tents they're, they're too, great. doesn't he? And, and, and yeah, he, he just got their new tent. Yeah. Also expensive, but like you said, they're all expensive. Yeah, they're all expensive. Yeah. And and I know of Hyperlite, but I haven't mm. done a deep dive. Okay, I'll show you at the house. Okay. Oh. I, I, I think the reason why wow. I think I'm put it on. For, I think I'm looking for like smaller cottage people. You know yeah. what I mean? Hyperlite is still small, but it's pretty mainstream. But it now it's getting mainstream. Well, it's in REI now. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see you there. Well, you that's go. pretty. Yeah, it's in REI now. So, so. Yeah. which why would you go to REI if you got J and H Outdoors that's here right. in Lexington? Exactly. Right. Shop local, people. Yeah, exactly. Shop local. Keep it local. Yep. There we go. Sorry, got to plug our I mean, store, I, man. All right, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll check yours out. Uh, I, I saw Metro's. It was nice, dude. Yeah. This one, I say, it can eat and eat and eat. It's like eighty liters, dude. It's what? insane. What do you need eighty liters for? Well, you know, we haven't been backpacking in a while together. 
Next time we go, you'll see why I need to have 80 liters. You remember that chair all, I showed you? Remember the chair earlier? It's all remember chocolate. Remember the chair, the lazy boy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell him yeah. for you. It's all chocolate. <laughs> Jeanette, it's all chocolate. you like it's that chair? It's all chocolate. <laughs> Janelle liked the chair. Janelle's hiding. She's like, I'm not getting that in front of the camera. <laughs> Yeah, that's why you so, need so many. We'll leaders. see. So my backpack uh, options are open at this point, but, but I am looking for something. You also, you don't have to use all eighty liters, by the way. It, it's a roll top. Yeah, oh, I figured you roll well, that sucker down to four we'll, liters if you want. We're, we're going to be getting some uh, some new Outdoor Vitals backpacks here real soon. Mm -hmm. uh, their new one that's Ultra Fabric. So yeah, the, I've had we'll have to, we'll have to give you an, give you yeah, an update I, on that one too. Shadowlight's good. Shadowlight's good. What I do like what I do like about Outdoor Vitals is they're they're doing some really awesome things, and I actually want to look closer to some of their stuff. I haven't looked at their their packs. I've mainly looked at their clothing. Yeah, you know, like their dragon mm -hmm. wool or whatever, like that yeah. stuff. Um, well, that's what this is. This is one of oh, the sun see? hoodies. Fancy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so I'm 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 looking for packs, and I'll look at Outdoor Vitals. Yeah, as well. they have they have a new one that's made out of Ultra Fabric, and it's I mean yeah. I'm looking forward to get my hands on it. I'm I really for, like I'm Ultra Fabric. For something in Ultra. I like that's Ultra Fabric. Have you seen the new uh, what's it called? Alula, I think is what it's called. It's a new fabric that's being used. Um, I think Durston's using it on his that's a fabric? his pack. Yeah. Alula. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Never heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's better than Ultra. What's they're next? saying they're saying it's stronger and lighter. Everything's stronger and lighter. That's how it works, mm -hmm. though. Which means it's cheaper too, right? Oh yeah, oh, way I don't cheaper. Know if it works like that. But yeah. actually, uh, the Durston pack looks pretty cool too, and it's a it's it's that kind of fabric. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking for something made in Ultra at this point. I think the Alula stuff. The thing that makes it cool is there's a way to um, uh, it has something to do with the fusion of the laminate on it. Where it it stays better, where it doesn't disconnect from the the actual fabric, so oh, it makes it more waterproof. Wow! So something like that. Did you <laughs> just that to become are, a complete uh, nerd for everybody. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they gear they're they're gear nerding out right now. Did, <laughs> did you see the other Derwin off the rails comment? Oh, man. Oh, he leave another? Yeah, I've got I've got to pull that one up here for us. Uh, it's uh, it Rob's my ridge runner guru. Yep. Rob is my uh, Rob is my ridge runner guru. I made my ridge line off his design. Thanks uh -huh. for the great tips. See, very cool. Well, uh, Rob, I, I got to be honest, I got soft shackles because of you. Oh, see, there you go. Jeff Myers, Myers Tech. Myers Tech, yeah. Yeah, I got yep. that because of you. I, that, that, I have no hardware on my hammock at this right, point. Right, it's nice. It's yeah. it's all Dyneema, uh, whatever it Dyneema does, it rope. It doesn't get lighter than that, and it doesn't break. No. Yeah, it's cool. Although, if you get that knot stuck in the cold, then you're done. Your life is <laughs> over. As far as Ridge Runner stuff, so my Warbonnet Ridge Runner hammock, um, like that was the bulk of my YouTube con uh, content for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as things kind of progressed, I found myself using, I uh, use the tent more now. I'll use the Superior hammock a little bit more now. And when it came down to choosing a hammock for this road life, I had to choose between the Superior hammock and the and the and the Ridge Runner, mm -hmm. which was a difficult decision. That's that Bridge hammock versus a gathered in. Yeah, gathered in right? hammock. Mm -hmm. And so I had to end up going with the Superior hammock, mainly because it's got an integrated under quilt. Right. And it takes two and a half minutes for me to set up. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, the Ridge Runner, in, in my opinion, it's the most comfortable, but there's more I got to pack with it, and there's yeah. more I have to do. It's got with the spread. You know what I picked up? Yeah. Yeah. So, Dutch. Dutch yeah. wear gear. Yeah. Uh, he made this uh, stuff sack. It's a Dyneema stuff sack that you can put your entire hammock and quilt in at one time. Like a slug tube, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's for the whole thing. Huh. So you can have your quilt already connected. I call it good. And all you do is you tie it up on either end and right. you're done. And I see the value of that. But the other thing with superior. Just uh, say you don't like hammocks. my idea. Just say you don't, I, like, I don't like my idea. idea. Just <laughs> say it. Just say it. If you, if you're gonna it's go, okay. If you're going to go with a separate underquilt, yes. But superior hammock, the underquilt's already there. It's 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 attached. You just migrate the down and you're done. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, what I don't, about I don't different fiddle. temps? I don't want to fiddle. But does it, does it unsnap? Does well, it then, stay on permanently? Uh, yeah, it's just it's part of the hammock. But what if you're what if you want to use your hammock in the wintertime and summertime? Well, then what you can do is get an additional underquilt and it snaps on. So then I have to have two quilts? You have two quilts anyways. Yeah, but what if you want Yeah, but not at the one? same time. Is it the same amount of down? <laughs> well, it, 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 then I got to snap amount. stuff. I don't want to snap stuff. It takes oh, a lot a longer second. than just like you, no, tying it into the hammock. With, with I think this is getting really difficult now. Now check it out. You, you check out Superior <laughs> oh, Hammock. Go. You check out Superior Danny. <laughs> I, Danny, I like Danny. I like Danny. I'm just messing with you, dude. Yeah, get, get, yeah. Uh, Danny's a good guy. Give them a clue. Danny's a good guy.
Should He's been doing it for a while now, too. Yeah, yeah. Should we see if there's any other questions and ask him about poop before we wrap? You know? Oh, I got to think about poop. I do. I do have a question. Oh, we have a question uh, right here, right here. Uh, first, the comment, the the light up there, it took me for a loop. It looked like it said, go next. I was like, oh, you guys uh, got some <laughs> <a> there. <laughs> Maybe it does. I, I wish we could get a camera on that right now because that's pretty funny. <laughs> that awesome. And then my question is, uh, who came up with the shadow stuff, the hand stuff for the Leave No uh, Trace principles? Yeah, that, that was someone in Leave No Trace. So that, that was mainly because... People learn differently. A lot of people can just hear things and learn. Some people can see. But some people need to do in order to learn, a kinesthetic learner. So we try to hit all of it by doing that. So it just helps. Uh, it's really good with kids and also helps with adults, too. So somewhere in, in the genius of Lido Trace education came up with the hand signals. And they're, and they're fun to do. That is really cool. Yeah. That is really cool. Really all right, even kids. Mary's saying, let's talk poop. Okay, oh. when Mary starts saying, let's talk poop, we got to start talking poop. So, Rob, I know you've got stories. Well, okay, I got, there's so many poop stories. Well, it's funny about the job I'm in. We talk about poop all the time. Like, poop is a constant subject. Well, it's pretty taboo it's in normal society. It's backpacking. Which it it's should backpacking. Be. Yeah, which oh, it should we should be. all just talk about poop. Do you poop? Yeah, I poop today. Do you breathe? Sometimes. Right. I'm breathing right now. Is it, is it okay to talk about breathing? If you want. Then it's okay to talk about poop. Oh, you heard it here. There we go. Leave No Trace just told us we can talk about you poop. You can talk about poop. There's no shame in pooping. If you don't poop, let me know because I guarantee you, you're not out there. Hey, that's good. With the Leave No Trace, it, uh, the main thing you keep saying is, you know, it's mostly for the masses, right? Like yeah. if that's mass, um, when the masses do something, everybody does it, then it creates a big effect on the environment. If one person's doing it, not as big of a deal. So I'm wondering... If you're if you're just on your own land, there's not backpackers going through there anytime. Do you need to dig a cat hole? Let's say there's not a water source within 500 feet of it. Okay. Can you just poop on the ground and I mean, some animal's going to eat that? Or? Um, I don't think leave no traces for your property, Jeremiah. Well, but this is an expert here. Okay. This is resident well, expert. I want to hear from. I, I think I Rob would facts. tell you that they, that's just weird. Well, he, well here's the, well, I mean, <laughs> it's your own property. At the end of the day, you can do what you want. I mean, mm -hmm. we do suggest having at least 200 feet be, be uh, away from a water source. Yeah. Because that's regardless. The yeah, that's the buffer zone you need for the land to filter mm -hmm. out anything, right, from rainwater and things like that. But. Your poop is not going to break down as fast mm -hmm. on the surface as it would six to eight inches down. Because six to eight inches below the surface, that's the sweet spot where the microbiomes live, the microorganisms yeah. live, mm -hmm. to break down your poop. If you go too deeper, then the heat from the sun can't get to it. Okay. So there's that. that You're trying to optimize. Well, you've also got decomposition. Well, you've right. also got the issue of human feces has, like, preservatives Correct. and stuff in it and because mm -hmm. of that that stuff doesn't break down because of that as well so right. wildlife ate it they could also be right stuff and the, yeah the, the other thing we get about poop a lot is like well why do i have to pick up my dog poop because my my dog's an animal it poops in the woods just like a, a bear would uh yes and no so if when we get human food when we get into poop what is poop made of well, it's made of the food that you've eaten exactly right what does a dog eat dog food What's in dog food? Oh, I yellow don't even want to know. Yellow dye number five. I'm sure all kinds of Grain meal, terrible. all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. What's in a bear's poop? Berries, fish. Exactly. Natural stuff in the environment. Right. So, Nuts. So if a bear poops in the woods, it's made of the things that came from that environment. Mm -hmm. Whereas a dog, I mean, they could have, be on medication. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that now that's in, in the environment. So that's why dog poop should be packed up. Now, I'll tell you this. Well, Jer Jer here's the question, though, Jeremiah. Yes. Ben McMillan wants to know if I poop on Jeremiah's property, is that a problem? <laughs> um, <laughs> that is not a problem as long as it's in a toilet on my property. Okay. Fair enough. Fair not enough. a problem. We've made the necessary arrangements. I'll tell you, here's the worst. And y'all can back me up on this, I'm sure. Dog poop that's left on trail... But in a plastic bag. That, oh, right that drives there, me nuts. That's the worst. Let if me, you do oh, that, there's a hot circle in hell. Can we just all start yelling? <laughs> ah, I'm let's, telling you. Let's take it further. Dog poop left on the ground next to the garbage can. Oh. Oh, now, I would prefer that over just leaving it on trail because at least then I can pick it up and put it in the trash I think can. a lot of people think, oh, I'll just come back and get it. Yeah, I think they just forget it. They're not, coming back, They're not coming back to get that. Right. One thing that we've seen Ridiculous. is, is uh, a dog poop. Get a carabiner and just carabiner to your dog's leash. Let your dog carry it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, ben wanted to clarify um, his comment and say no, right in the front yard. Oh, oh right in the front yard. Yeah. Right well, so that is going to be a problem, John. You, you would, <laughs> that is an issue. Did you well, see? Uh, Mary said she would poop in Jeremiah's property. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, so there's that. Yeah. There's that. Um, <laughs> so, okay, story. Poop stories? Yes, because he just cut, he, he got you talking about something else. Oh, my so, goodness. Well, okay, so this one, it happened very, 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 very recently. So I don't know what was going on, but I was backpacking recently with backpacking with Jason in the Red River Gorge, and I don't know what I ate. Right. But I probably farted 400 times. Oh. And it wasn't like normal farts. They were like they were like the hot ones that like singed the nose hairs a little bit. And Jason and Janelle were like, "What are you doing?" And several times I had to run to the woods, and nothing happened. I just farted a bunch. Those right? are the worst. Right? And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, well, Did you dig I, the cat hole? I, yeah, they, so the cat hole was done. So it was prepped. It was yeah, ready it, it for was whenever the time would right, come. Right. Okay. So just, just so you know, since you're there, and if you just fart, you should still wipe. But anyways, um, so after a while, in the middle of the night, I got the gurgles. I'm like, this has to happen. I couldn't find my cat hole. I couldn't find it. I went right to where I thought it was. Jason used it. <gasps> I knew oh, it. Oh, he's he's bad for that man. I knew he's got it. used it. You heard it right here, folks. He's not he's not me. even listening tonight. So so, but he and, did it. And you don't know this, Janelle doesn't know either. Jason, I had to poop where I was, and in the morning I got up earlier than everyone. I had to go back and grab it. With I had like three sticks, like a like a picker thing, and I found the oh, hole. And chopsticks. I put it yeah. And chopsticks. I, and yeah. 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 And I brought it <laughs> to the hole that I found that the next morning. I didn't want to leave it there. I felt so bad. Well, I would hope so. You work for Leave No Trace. Yeah, right, 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 I'm saying. And I think we attributed it to biscuits and gravy. I think that got me. Biscuit, the southern Really? Food, so which man. one? Which one? I love biscuits and gravy. Where oh, was that? Who's, whose biscuits and gravy was it? I don't remember. Was it a restaurant? Yeah. It might have been Peak Refuel. No, it wasn't Peak Refuel. <laughs> Peak Refuel's biscuits and gravy is delicious. Oh, it's fire. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, because it's actual biscuits. It yeah. is actual biscuits. You it's got to cr- crumble biscuits. them up first a little bit, though. Yeah, do they, um, they sell peak refuel here? Do they? Mm. If they don't, we need to hook you guys up with some peak refuel. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that, that's the company right there, man. Yeah. That's some good food. That's my so, thing. And then somebody called the Chopsticks Crap Sticks. Crap Sticks. That's perfect. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great title for yeah. those. <laughs> so, uh, Rob, why don't you tell people how they can find out about you, how they can find out about more about Leave No Trace. I know you're doing videos all year just kind of talking about stuff. Yeah. Why don't so, you share it with us? So, my personal YouTube channel is my name. It's Rob Pelton. You can see it right there. I also have an Instagram as well. That's rpelton1. I'm sure the links will be in the description. Um, now, we do create content for Leave No Trace, but it's important for me to tell you that my content for Rob Pelton is separate from Leave No Trace content. I can't, I can't leverage the Leave No Trace into the stuff I do. So everything is very, very separate and intentionally that way. So this podcast, I'm here as Rob Pelton, who happens to do Leave No Trace stuff. I'm not here a, in a Leave No Trace capacity. Um, I'm sure I may have, may have been a little bit more diplomatic, but I think I did okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is still going to get through the rounds, I'm sure. But, um, but it is very, very separate. So the stuff that I use on my own personal channel may be different from what sponsors leave no trace right that's why it's that's why it's separate right but as far as leave no trace if you want to dive in a little bit more there is lnt.org uh you know you can get a membership there's even free courses on there and how you can be a better steward of your uh the the wild lands that you enjoy and uh, there's a lot of free resources on that on that website as well that you can you can check out that is absolutely awesome man we appreciate you being on here, dude. I appreciate you having me, you know, and J&H as well. I mean, Yeah, dude. thank you. Yeah, J&H. thanks to Chris and everybody yes, at J&H. Absolutely. This is just awesome to be able to do this. Yeah, it's kind I, of fun. I agree. I'm glad I, uh, we were coming through at this time. It was like, it was like so the timing was perfect. Stars well, and when we first oh, asked yeah. you, we were like, it's on April 1st. And you're like, um, are you messing with me? Are you messing with me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're just glad you're here. And uh, this is a way better backdrop than uh, oh, okay. my garage or yeah. Jeremiah's office. Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we're very thankful to j h for letting us do this. Yeah. And to everybody who showed up and hung out with us, uh, it's been a fun night. It's been a fun night. Jeremiah, next week, it's a next new week. day. That's right. For the Backpacking Podcast. Let me tell you who we have on next week. Let's, let's hear it. Presented by... Well, not, not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they haven't paid us yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. I think you scheduled the next guest, and they're going to teach us about food. And who would that I be? Like that would be Backcountry Foodie. Backcountry you probably foodie. have uh, seen her on Instagram. Uh, she's been on other podcasts like the Backpacking and Blisters podcast. Uh, what's great about 
uh, backcountry foodie is she comes on and she gives great ways that you can eat healthier while also lowering your base weight while you're on trail so definitely get on next week and check that out it's going to be that. awesome uh we also have a huge guest coming on shortly after that jeremiah you mm -hmm. want to talk about that one yeah glenn van pesky who is the uh founder of gossamer gear and That's awesome. He's going to be releasing his new book. I think it's maybe the day that we do the live stream, which will be April 15th, or it's dropping the next day. But you'll yeah. have to check out his book. It's a fascinating book. All about take less, do more, you know, kind of like uh, like what you said with Backcountry Foodie. On yeah. The, you know, it kind of teaches you how to do things a better way, but with less. Right. So. And what's great is uh, Matthew McConaughey is actually one of the people <laughs> – <laughs> who who gives us who who writes on the book and uh, another one is the the owner of Whole Foods Company. That's yeah, cool. John Mackey, who is yeah. a co-owner uh, or a co-founder of uh, Whole Foods, and now is the owner forward. and now is the owner of Gossamer Gear, if I believe, if I if I remember it correctly. Oh, I don't know. We'll have to ask. So. Glenn. And uh, yeah, there is a good story about Matthew it, McConaughey that I can't wait to talk. Yeah, about. it's going to be great. But this is we're really excited to have him on, and then we also have probably the most interesting guest that we've ever had on here mm, in a guy who goes by moon dog oh yes. moon dog roop is going to be on here in a few weeks and he does something called is it skate packing is yeah. that what he calls it yeah he we've talked to him back and forth messaging and emailing and i can't wait to hear more about this skate pack it's like backpacking skateboarding together which if you can combine those two communities that's huge that's yeah, pretty awesome not? so uh, we're excited to have him on in a few weeks uh we've got some just great guests lined up and obviously kicking off with this guy yeah just tells you it's all high class all right, it's all high it. class so for myself and jeremiah thank you guys for tuning in to the backpacking podcast we will catch you guys on the next one adios folks